In today's video, we're going to be talking about the brain, and in the next video, the nervous system. So stay tuned. Okay, so for the whole brain topic, it's actually quite a very, very small topic. Uh, there's only two parts, uh, well, two, two sections, you could say, that the specification demands you know. The first being, describe with the aid of diagrams the gross structure of the human brain and outline the functions of the cerebrum, cerebellum, medulla oblongata and the hypothalamus. So, as you can tell, I'm obviously no artist at all, so I would re definitely recommend uh, you know, going on Google or looking up some more detailed pictures, but I'm basically, like I say, showing you the gross structure of the brain, like it wants to know in the specification. But, yeah, I really am no artist, so don't take my word as this is the 100% an accurate brain. So, I'm just going to talk about the main regions of the brain and their functions, I suppose. So here we've got the cerebrum. This is by far the largest part of the human brain. It's divided into two hemispheres, which are linked by this area. I'm going to slightly draw lines through it, the shaded area. It's very thin. It's called the corpus callosum. And uh, that isn't actually in the specification, but I have seen it in a past paper state the part of the brain that connects the two hemispheres. So there we have it. So essentially, the function of the cerebrum is all the control of the high order processes, such as memory, language, function. Uh, deciding what to do, decision making, maths, and all, all things like that. That's why it is the largest part. We, Us as humans, as a species, we have such a large cerebrum. That's why we're so complex and I suppose that's why we're the most dominant species on the planet today because we can think things through and work together to, to solve tasks. So, next, at the uh, at the back there, at the bottom, we have the cerebellum. This is essentially, this basically controls uh, all the coordination of movement, posture, uh, the fine motor skills, like picking the guitar fingers, like uh, like little picking patterns and things, all the really fine motor muscle movements, uh, driving. It's like, it's like a non-conscious operation. After experience, you get used to just be able to move your foot and move the steering wheel of your hands and your muscles without even, even thinking about it. Okay, so next, so this little, this little black this black thing I've drawn here is a a, a little black dot, uh, like a, like a grape or a pea shape, kind of hangs out in the brain. This is your hypothalamus. This essentially is in control of most of your, if not all, of uh, your home your body's homeostatic mechanisms, such as um, like if you remember from F two one four, you have your osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus that detect uh, changes in water potential to secrete ADH. Next, you have your this long thing here. This is your medulla oblongata. And this is essentially control of all the all the non-skeletal muscles. So that's all the muscles we can move. As you know, we've got involuntary, voluntary, and cardiac muscle. So the non-skeletal muscles mean our involuntary and our cardiac muscles are being controlled by the medulla oblongata and what happens there. So uh, you've got things like the cardiac, the cardiovascular center, the cardiac center, the respiratory center, all these sorts of mechanisms that control the heart rate, the breathing rate, and things like that are located here. So, I'm going to do a quick question, just to test your knowledge, and maybe mine, because right now we've got a human versus a cow, so who has the larger or the more complex cerebellum? I'm going to give you like a couple of seconds, like right now, pause it. Right, if you didn't pause it, that's your problem. The human would have the larger cerebellum, because when you think about it, the cow has just got these legs and these hooves that just sit there on the grass, so it doesn't really have that much fine motor movement. Now, don't get me wrong, it definitely has some, all, all, all mammals would. But the humans would have definitely by far have the most complex. I mean, we need to peel fruit and things like this that use use our fingers and use actual movement and thought in it to, to enable us to do this. So definitely the humans. Did you get that right? Well done. Right, so the next part of the specification on the brain is describe the role of the brain and nervous system in coordinated muscular movement. So how do the brain and the muscles move together? So really what happens is the, the decision to voluntarily move uh, for example, I'm going to move my hand right now. That decision to move was made in my cerebellum. So neurons from that cerebellum would carry impulses to motor areas, to the muscles, uh, the muscles up further up my arm that allow me to move my arm, and then the muscles in matching my hands and my fingers to allow me to to create the structures I'm creating and the shapes of my hands and fingers right now. So obviously then the motor areas then transport that to effectors, so the energy is used as an effector, as an output mechanism, to enable me to do this. 